Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass, and today is the day that Stadia will be shutting off for good. However, not before Google gave us one last bit of good news, the Stadia controller can now be updated to use standard Bluetooth, so let's take a look. So if like me you have a Stadia Pro, which includes the Stadia controller and also a Chromecast Ultra, you can now actually use the controller side of things moving forward instead of, you know, throwing it away or leaving it in the cupboard. And that's great because for me the Stadia controller, although the server side of things obviously hasn't panned out, the actual controller itself still feels extremely nice. The triggers are really responsive, the buttons are extremely clicky, and just in general the ergonomics of the actual controller itself is actually pretty good. I would actually put it just below one of the Xbox One controllers and actually above a PlayStation controller, just the overall ergonomics and feel in the hand. But how do we get it from Wi-Fi over to Bluetooth? Well, it's super simple. Now you're going to need three things, a USB-C cable, the Stadia controller, and some sort of device, in my case, my MacBook Pro, to actually go onto the Chrome browser to get everything up and running. So on your chosen device, you want to head over to the link that is gonna be in the description down below, which basically explains everything that you need about switching over to Bluetooth mode. Now some things to keep in mind and some important information. Switching is permanent. Once you put it over to the Bluetooth mode, you can't change it back to Wi-Fi. However, you can do this right up until the 31st of December of this year. So you've basically got a whole year to make that decision. And then just below that, you do have some frequently asked questions. So for example, you've got how do you pair the controller with Bluetooth? What devices are supported? Which of course we will get onto and just some other frequently asked questions. Next up then, you just want to click on switch to Bluetooth mode. You're then gonna have a really simple to follow walkthrough. So on the right hand side, switch to Bluetooth mode, start, and then on the right hand side is how you can check for updates with Bluetooth moving forward. Of course, read all of the terms of service and then just click accept. So first off, what you need to do is plug in your Stadia controller to your device that you're going to be using. And obviously make sure your controller has been charged for more than 30 minutes and they're using a USB-C data cable. It can't just be a standard charging cable. Now, once everything is all set and plugged in next all you need to do is then click on continue you then need to allow chrome to verify your controller so click chrome verification and it'll bring up a little pop-up box which you just need to click allow it's out of shot here but it will be in the top left hand corner and then click on next step now here what you have to do is basically unlock the stadia controller so if you've ever rooted or jailbroken a phone before it's a very similar process now there is a very simple three-step walkthrough on the actual website itself, but let me just show you quickly. So first off, you have to unplug your controller to power it off. Now once it's unplugged, make sure that all of the lights are off around the Stadia icon itself, that way you know that it is completely off. You then need to hold the three dot button while plugging in the controller. Now the status light itself should remain off, but if it does turn on, unplug it and then try it again. And then what you have to do is press the three dot button again, plus the Google Assistant button, plus A, plus B, all at the same time. It can be a little bit finicky to do, but once you've done that, you're pretty much set and ready to go. Now, there won't be any sort of controller feedback, whether that's a vibration or any lights or anything, so you just kind of have to know that it's unlocked before you then click on the next step. Then all you need to do is click on allow for the pop-up that comes up for allow accessory to connect. Now do keep in mind that this will show ever so slightly different if you're using a Windows machine. And then you will get one last pop-up box that comes up, again allowing the accessory to connect. Just click allow on that once more and then click on the next steps. Now again you will get a dialog box up in the top left hand corner to basically allow Chrome to download the Bluetooth update for the controller itself and again just click allow. Once that's done the download will be complete and then you can go on to the next step. Now you will then have one last pop-up box that is basically to allow the installation of the Bluetooth mode on the controller. So again, just click allow Chrome to install. And this process is extremely quick to do, maybe taking around 20 or 30 seconds from start to finish. And then you're pretty much set and ready to go. As you can see, the latest Bluetooth mode update is installed, game on, your controller is in Bluetooth mode and compared to Bluetooth devices, you can now unplug your controller. So that's it, the setup is complete. We've now got Bluetooth on the Stadia controller. So how exactly does it work? So all you need to do to actually pair your controller to a device is to hold down the Stadia icon and also the Y button at the same time. And then an orange light will appear around the Stadia logo. That's how you know the controller is actually in pairing mode for Bluetooth. Then all you need to do is head over to your device of choice, go into your standard Bluetooth settings, find the actual device itself, pair it, and you're set and ready to go. Now guys, do keep in mind there are some limitations with the Stadia controller. So although it is now using Bluetooth, it doesn't work with every device that I currently own. Now some of the operating systems that it will work on is going to be Windows 10, Windows 11, Chrome OS, Mac OS, Steam and Android. Unfortunately, no love for the iPhone and iOS or even an iPad. 
And for me, that's not actually amazing. I was hoping to use the Stadia controller with my iOS device using it on my iPhone 14 Pro, maybe using it for Apex Legends, Call of Duty Mobile, but unfortunately that's not a feature at the moment. Well, to be honest guys, it works like any other Bluetooth controller. I've used it in some third person games, some racing games, and it works extremely well. Now you do still get the occasional lag or a little bit of stutter here and there that you get with Bluetooth devices in general, but for me, the actual controls themselves have worked extremely well pretty much on any game that I've I've tried it on so far. Some of the buttons in different games are mapped ever so slightly different, so there was one racing game that I tried, Accelerate and Brake was actually left and right on the left and right analog stick, and then turning again left and right as it would normally be on the left analog stick. So again, there's a little bit of work to be done, however on the website as you saw there, as well as actually putting it into Bluetooth mode, you can actually check for Bluetooth updates moving forward, so hopefully they're going to keep updating the controller, or at least a little bit, to get it to a state where it's just a standard Bluetooth controller without any of these limitations. And of course if anything changes, if I can then use it on an iOS device, I will be linking it down in the comment section down below, pinning it there for everyone to see, so that you guys know exactly what is going on with the controller moving forward. And that's going to do it guys for this video on how to turn your Stadia controller into a Bluetooth controller. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. If you've got any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below as well. Also, do keep in mind that because Stadia is shutting down, you can actually get some of these Stadia controllers for around $5 to $10, which is actually extremely cheap for a standard Bluetooth controller. But anyway guys, if you're not already subscribed, now's a great time to do so. And once you hit that subscribe button, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you're notified any time I post a new video here on the channel. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass, thanks very much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.